Hello and welcome to part two of the three-part video series of me taking one of the designs from our graphic designer and implementing it into the, the website or where it's being used. Um, in the last video we talked about uh, interfaces and how I kind of build out an interface and things that I know a pop-up is going to end up taking in and what it's going to end up doing. Uh, and what information needs to be passed back from the pop-up on the call to action button being pushed. So in this one, I'm actually going to be going through the big part of it, which is the UI, how I take a, a pop-up like this from the designs and how I actually implement it into our code base. So the first thing that I will do now is I will pull up the project that I'm using. I'm going to be making sure that my, uh, my system's running and I can pull up the page here, which we already saw in this previous one. Uh, next thing I'm going to do is I will go down to the uh, pop-ups folder, which is inside our source folder, and I'm going to go ahead and create uh, our pop the new pop-up that we're going to be making. So in this case, because how I like to think about my naming convention, if we look back here, I know that this is going to be an add and an edit pop-up. It's going to be one component, and it's creating a link. So more or less, I'm just going to call it uh, add edit link pop-up. And because, as I said, this has already been created in our project, this add edit link pop-up, I'm going to make another one, and I'm going to call it demo add edit link pop-up. So I'm going to go new, new folder, and we do this in camel case. So it's going to be demo add edit link pop-up. Create that. And then we always create the two files with it, which is just going to be the same name, but this is in Pascal case. So demo add edit link pop up. If I can get the syntax correct here, this is going to be the TSX. Go ahead and add it to the GitLab repo. Next one, demo add edit link pop up dot t or dot scss. So I have some live templates with my uh, IDE that I can use, and it really helps me help speed up my coding when I'm creating new components and things like that. So in this case, all I have to do is just type in new SCSS, push enter, and it's going to be bringing in the import of our themes, and it's going to start prefixing our component that we're making with RS, which is red sky. And then this is just, again, in Pascal case, demo, add, edit, link, pop up. And we'll go back to our TSX file. And here and I'm going to do the same thing. I have a live template that I can use. This is going to be new comp. Enter and demo add edit link pop up. Enter. There we go. So uh, let's see. The next thing will be. Let's uh, start building on the UI and getting this so we can actually see it. So. Um, Next thing I'm going to do is I know, as I said in the previous video, we're going to be building this out on the dashboard page so we can see it. But let's at least get it to where we can see that this pop-up is pulling up. So I'm just going to come into here, go to the page header, and say on primary action click, takes an object, and then there's an on click in there. And then we're going to just do a fat arrow function, and we're going to say pop-up controller dot open. We're going to pass in our props for the demo add edit link pop-up props. And we're going to have it open our demo add link pop-up. And then that just brought it right on in. So if we save that and then check out uh, the page here, go to the mixers admin, refresh the page. Now we got to give it some words so we can see it a little better, but that's real not too hard. So inside here, children, click me, save, come back. Awesome. Now we got this. So if I click this, see the page kind of grayed out a little bit. So that's where our pop-up is. As I said, that pop-up wrapper is what is doing this. It grays out the entire page and everything like that. And it takes our item, puts it right in the center. But because we have no CSS done to it, we, uh, we, we're not seeing it, so I'm just going to go ahead and refresh the page because we also have no call to actions to close that, so there it is. So back in our code here, what I'm going to do is, let's see, I'm going to try to make this smaller so we can try to pull in the, um, 
the design so we can kind of design and I'll show you. I'm going to start with the CSS here and move this in and grab this, pull this guy in just ever so slightly. Get this up. All right. So uh, there's some basic things that we can tell off right, right off the bat. So if we click on this, we already know that the pop-up is going to be 343 pixels. We can see it from up there. We can also see it here. So uh, with this design, we're not making responsive items. So everything is pretty much the width that we'll see. The height will be based on the components below. We'll dynamically render that. So width 343 pixels. Uh, clicking on this as well, if we scroll down, we should see the background color is this neutral right, white. So I'm going to say background color, theme, bar, neutral white. We know there's a border radius on this of, let's see, right here, 8 pixels. So border radius, 8 pixels. And now we got that. And what I like to do is kind of look around the component here. And for everyone who's I've talked to before and explained this, there's like the difference between margin and padding. As I say, padding is what pushes items in, while margin is used to push items away from each other. So when I'm hovering over these, these items that uh, our designer made, I kind of look at the gaps that I have between the top and the left side. I can see a 16 pixel gap there, 16 pixel gap at the top. If I come down here and try to hover over this whole component, I still see a 16 pixel gap left and right. So I'm just going to go ahead and add a padding of 16 pixels all around. And then uh, knowing that we have this little close button here, some people like to position this in different ways, but what I found the best way to do it is be is actually having this icon be used as position absolute. So let me just for a second here, I'm going to hide uh, all of our, I gotta expand this, oops, so I can hide all those um, little chat icon things there to show the functionality. There we go. Now, if we look at this, we got our width, we got all that, so that's pretty good. But um, as I was saying right here, I know that these, I like to position these uh, absolute. So more or less what that means is I'm going to need to add a position to the parent component here, position relative, so that the absolute will base itself off of its parent element right there. The next thing I'm going to want to do before I actually pull up the, the pop-up and see how it's looking right now is I actually want to add this header here, and I want to add the little close icon right here just to be able to see what uh, how it's looking and everything like that or I can at least close it so to do that because we're gonna be position absolute in the icon it doesn't necessarily matter where we're putting it it just has to be a child of the uh, root parent element here so I'm gonna use our icon component and this takes in a prop called icon image and that's gonna start with icon dash close is what I believe the name of it is and then what I do to check the width, because by default this sets it to a font size of 16 pixels because our icons are all used in a font library. I like to come over to this icon here and look at the width and it says 24 pixels by 24 pixels. So I'm just going to, I usually use the width, but in this case I'm feeling pretty confident that the width and the height, because they're both 24, 24 font size will suffice. So I'll say font size and 24. We also need this to be able to close the component. So if I do an on click, let's see, we'll scroll over here, do a fat arrow and call here. I will do a, when it's clicked, a uh, pop-up controller dot close. And I'm just going to pass in the name of this demo, add link pop-up. So that way it will close the pop-up when we open it. Next thing I'm going to do is I'm just going to go ahead and add this this icon or this this text right here, which when you click on it, sometimes you got to get it just right with Zeppelin, which is the weirdest part. We can see that this is a subheader one, semi bold, and it default has this purple dark. And uh, by default, when we set up a project, we set up a the default color for all text, so I won't need to worry about this. I won't need to worry about all any of this stuff here. All I need to look at is a subheader one, semi bold. So if I go label, which is our label component, if I can spell it right, 
And inside this, this takes two props. I guess I've got to import it. First one is going to be the variant, and as I said, it's going to be that subheader one. Autocomplete is nice, and then it's going to have a weight for its font weight, and that's going to be semi bold autocomplete. And inside there, it's going to be an add link. But as we talked about before, we know that this is going to be an add or edit link, and I'll explain how I'll go about having this be a switch depending on what information is passed in through it a bit later. So for now, let's format that so we can see everything, and we should be able to save it. And now check out what it looks like. If I now just move this here, click me. There, it looks a little crude right now, and that looks like the wrong icon. So I'm going to show you how I can find what icons we have inside our project. All right, now before we go there, um, let's just double check to see if our close works. And it does, so we can bring it open and close it. So I'm going to show you where we can go find the correct icon for that. And then um, we can start going down the list as well for the rest of the designs there. So let's go back to the code here. And I'm just going to go ahead and full on expand this so it's easier for me to see. Um, first, before I do that, I know that this also needed to be text align center. And this icon needs to close change. And I think it's actually going to be circle close, but I will show you where you can find that in a project if you don't know is you're going to come up to the icons folder, open that, you're going to click on the demo HTML, and then for me, I can just open my stuff through one of these um, explorers. So I'm just going to go to open up an edge, and it opens it up, and this is where I can scroll down to see where that icon is. And do, 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 keep scrolling. We got right here, icon circle close. So I'm just going to go ahead and copy this. I'll close out of this now. Close out of this, go back here, change this to that. Boom. There it is. So but before we go and check the code, there's a couple other things I want to show you that we need to do to make sure this is all positioned right. So uh, first off, this icon has a different color. It has this neutral gray. Uh, as I said, by default, everything has that purple color. So we're going to need to go ahead and add a color to this. But because I know it to be a... a grabbing this component with CSS and moving it around. I'm not going to use the props on the icon. What I'm going to do is actually go into the SCSS here. And what I like to do is I don't necessarily like to give everything class names when I can just go ahead and say RS icon. And then I can be very specific by doing an and and saying the um, icon dash. Oh, well, here I have it in my clipboard. This, so that way I can grab exactly that one. We know that this icon is going to have position absolute on it, and I'll show you how we figure out which way left and right, and we're going to do it here in a second. Uh, but we also know that the color, because again, it's a font, it needs a color, not a background color, of theme var, and it's that neutral dollar sign, neutral gray, and I believe it was 400. If we just double check real quick, neutral gray 600. So neutral gray 600, we'll change the color of it. And then while we're looking here, this is how I like to figure out how to position it, is I click on it and I can see that's gonna be 16 pixels right. And then trying to get the top here, I might have to zoom in a little bit. It's, this is a downside to Zeppelin that I'm not a big fan, but I can see very, very vaguely, it says 20 pixels right there behind it. Uh, it's super annoying to do this, but this is what we have to deal with with the Zeppelin but 20 pixels from the top. So 16 right, 20 from the top. So top, 20 pixels. Make sure I close this. Right, 16 pixels. So that should at least get that positioned. Next, when we come in there, we should see that our uh, text is aligned in the center. So it pretty much should look almost like this right now, minus this border bottom. And we'll get into that here in a second. So. Moving on up to here, if we click me, there it is. Look at that. Add link, it's right there. If we inspect this, it's not a mobile app, so i got to have it a little bigger. We can kind of see that we have our padding of 16 pixels around it. We can see our icon. It's not going to show us the left and right, but it looks pretty much in line of where it is. The add link is all centered. Awesome. 
All right, so then let's just continue with the design here. Before I go back to code, let's kind of look back at it here. So we can kind of see from the top here that we have this horizontal rule that's like a border bottom, which you could have wrapped this in a box, but I try to do a little bit less code than that's needed because you know, it just becomes more cluttered. But I see that we have this horizontal rule here. I see we have this image component that we have, this upload one, which is one that we have. This is about 24 pixels from there. Then we have a title input or a label input here, and that's about 24 pixels. We have, looks like a box that wraps to label inputs. And if I click on that, that's also about 24 pixels. So I'm starting to see some consistency here with this 24 pixel gap. And with CSS, there's a real easy way to achieve this gap without having to do a margin bottom on every one of these components. And I'm gonna show you how I'm gonna set that up here. So if I click on this just to validate, everything's 24 pixels because sometimes our designer does get stuff wrong, which is all right. All right, cool, 24 pixels, and then the bottom of this should be 16, yep. So with that knowledge in mind, I think what I'm going to do is I will take, I kind of look at this as a box. I'm going to wrap this whole section in a box, and I will add it. Uh, like probably a class name as in like content wrapper because it's all the main content of this pop-up and then um, I'll kind of just show you how I'll lay that all out here but we also have some of these other components in here that um, I'll be able to use and start to show you some ones that we built out here uh, select drop down so all right let's just kind of get to it um, a lot of this I can do in CSS and all that so I'm going to go ahead and pull open this guy let's get him to be about half that screen size again we'll close this out and we'll move that there get this guy just kind of get this a little better set up for us boom there awesome so should be enough workspace for me all right so let's just kind of go down with our with our elements that we know we're going to need. So after this, as I said, I'm going to wrap this next section here in a box. And let's just give this a class name as content wrapper. And what I like to do is after I make a class name, I just go right to my SCSS. And I kind of keep things in order here, get outside the icon, do content wrapper. And then that way I can start building stuff from there. Uh, Knowing that everything inside this is going to have a gap, uh, a f easy way to do a gap that I found, there's two ways to really do it, and the way I like to do, because it's I've found very minimal times that it doesn't work, but um, I like to do display grid, and then all I do is just a gap, and then we're going to say 24 pixels, because that's what it was, but another way to achieve this is to also do display flex, flex direction uh, column, and then you can also do gap 24 pixels. Uh, in the past, I found issues by doing this with uh, between iOS and Android, but it's been such a long time since I've seen issues with it um, that I just, I mean, I just stay away from it and I do it this way. Uh, but if you are seeing issues with your code and you can't figure out why, maybe try display flex, flex direction column um, or vice versa. So. So knowing that, we're going to have this stuff, so that will help us out here. I know eventually we're going to have to do some CSS for horizontal rules, so I'll add that in there. And let's go ahead and just actually add that component in here. It's an HR. It's self-closing. And if we come over here, it's really hard to see, but if we click on it, we should be able to see that its width is going to be pretty much auto. Or like as I look at it, it's 16 pixels left and right, but our margin, or excuse me, our padding should keep that in check. Uh, it looks like it's going to have a background color, so there's some default stuff to a horizontal rule that we'll have to get rid of, and we're at the say border, none. Uh, background color is going to be that theme bar, and it's going to be that neutral gray, neutral gray 50 here. It looks like it has a height of two pixels, so we'll say height two pixels, and by default it should. Uh, go to max width so we can kind of check this out if we click back over here close the pop-up i gotta refresh the page sometimes with uh, v it gets in a weird state uh, so we'll close this up and it's really hard to see it there can barely see if it's even there so 
Let's just go ahead and change this to width. If uh, we pull up the dev tools so I can help troubleshoot this and see. Coming in here. Doo -doo -doo. Had a uh, pause the video for a second to pull it up. I had the wrong dev tools up. So if I kind of hover over here, we can kind of see I opened up the content wrapper and then I hover over this and I changed it. I click on it and I changed the width to two pixels. If I change the height to two pixels, we can see if I hover over it, it's right there and it looks like it's showing a zero pixel. So we might have to actually say width. 200% or excuse me 100% and there it is now I can see it it's right in there perfect uh, and by default this does have some margin on it so let's go ahead and get rid of that margin zero Boom. so I will just take this bit of code because this is sometimes how I develop is in the browser I'm gonna copy that minimize here go down here and paste that in there awesome so now if I save this, we should see the line right there. And another thing that we need to point out is that there was actually a gap between the top here and the link, about an eight pixel gap. So instead of adding a class name or doing the targeting like I did with this RS icon, we can just simply just go to that label, go to it and add in our prop and just margin bottom and eight. Uh, rule of thumb is I like to push things down versus push things up. I could have obviously had this thing do a push up and push that away but this seems to be a little easier uh, to, to help. So this is actually gonna push that entire box down now eight pixels. All right, let's just keep rolling down here. So now I feel like we're gonna be pretty comfortable by throwing these components in here and I'll kind of talk through them as I go ahead and do it. So next thing I know, going and move it on down is we're gonna have this uh, image component, which I believe we called our, our image, or yeah, drag and drop, it's our drag and drop media uploader is what we called it and there's a couple media types that we're going to have to add in here and this is just going to be a uh, a tile upload on upload this is going to be a fat arrow function that we won't mess with because we're not doing the logic right now and then background image url will just has it as an empty string and we'll close that we'll go ahead and prettier this up i'm going to go ahead and move this just a little more so i can see everything better so we got all those simple components on there. Um, knowing that this needs to be centered, what I need to do is I'm going to go ahead and click into it, and I'm going to go down and grab the CSS for it, which by default, it should just be RS drag and drop because we uh, do all of our CSS that way. Inside here, I'm going to go ahead and paste that guy in here. I'm going to give him a margin zero auto. That's an easy way to center it. I don't need to do top or bottom for it because that's all being handled by the gap. So now this should be centered. If we keep going down, we know that we need to add that label input. And then this one's gonna have a title and it's called tile, or title. It's gonna be input type. Uh, this is all the input props. Which, hang on, I gotta close this. So if I open this and do a control space, I can see all the required stuff that's gonna be in here. Um, let's see. Do, do, do. On this one, we have to put a mode, which if I recall, it's going to have a look. Sorry, I had to pause and find it real quick here, but it's actually going to be called um, input mode is what it is. Sometimes you have to, I mean, you use so many components, you have to kind of go back through and find them throughout the project. I didn't want to show you that process of me going to see where... Um, just the props names so if they're not pulling up like this right away. So anyways, it's going to be input mode. Mode is going to be in here. And this one's going to be text because it's a text input. And then we're going to have to add a couple other things to this that we will add in a little bit. But we know there's going to be control and everything like that. Uh, there is a placeholder and it's title. So we can go ahead and add that placeholder. And it's going to be title. And one other thing that we did not add to the props of this is that we gotta say is required. And by default, if you just leave this alone and don't add it equal to true, it uh, it believes that this is true. So, because it is here, so it is there. Uh, that's what's nice about Boolean values. So if I just prettier this up, 
looks a little easier there. So now we should have our link to that horizontal rule to this image block to our title. Uh, this should all be formatted out. Now moving on down to this next area. So when I look at things again, I kind of look at things in boxes and how I can fit stuff. So I can tell that these are two inputs that are going to be pretty much displayed flex. So from block, top and bottom to left and right. That's what flex will do. And it looks like it has a gap of 24 pixels. So in this case, I'm just going to go ahead and do a box. Open that up. Do a display flex. And then let's just do a gap of 24 pixels in shorthand we just do 24 like that so that should handle that and then we're going to pretty much take two more of these put them in here together let's change the title for the first one's going to be type it is required but it also is disabled if you look at that so that's going to be a prop that we add on here disabled and that's true we gotta make sure we add this. It's placeholder is link and it's type. It's still gonna be a text, it's required. And that should be it for that one. Now this guy right here is gonna have a little bit more because it has this uh, helper text underneath it. So again, we're gonna do this one in a box so that the root level with flex is only uh, flexing the two items here. We're gonna take this out, cut him place it here. Oops, looks like it got out of my clipboard. Place it here. This one is flare. It is required. And the placeholder is going to be flare, all uppercase there. And I'll show you again when we get to the logic of how we make sure all this stuff um, is, is in uppercase when we, when we do it. Do, do, do. We have to then, let's see, add this one's not disabled, but underneath this whole component, we have to add this text. So if I come here and click on it, I can see that this text is a caption one. It's regular and it uses this neutral gray 600. So this is going to be one of those instances that I'm going to uh, kind of change some stuff on it. But anyways, it's just going to be a label. And it looks like the text is 12 characters max. So actually, I think what we can do is we can click on this and it copies it to your clipboard. So this way, we don't ever have any spelling mistakes and we can always say, hey, I just copied the text there. So that's a fast way you can do it for areas. It's variant, as we said, it's going to be a caption one and its font weight is regular. Caption one, weight is regular. There we go. That will be underneath it, but if we look at it, it looks like it has a bit of a left margin of eight pixels. So I'm gonna go ahead and just say margin left, eight. And then the next thing I'm gonna do is, actually it has a margin from the top as well, four pixels. So I, rule of thumb, I say push everything down, but when I'm already at, uh, using this here, uh, this margin, instead of adding another line there, I can just actually just change this to be just margin and we can just say eight pixels from the top right is zero bottom is zero and then left so, um, excuse me i had this back resistance before pixels and then the bottom is going to be uh, left right top right bottom left is eight pixels so that's a fast way to do that just pretty this up doesn't need to change and now we have our box that should have this all wrapped into it and this underneath it so I think this is a lot of code that we've added let's actually see what our uh, what it's looking like so far so I'm gonna go ahead and save this and see what we might need to adjust um, luckily I mean we're using Vite, so it <laughs> re-rendered right away we looks pretty dang accurate right off the bat see everything without actually holding the thing up to it back to back we can see that but if we come here if we actually inspect this we can see our gaps that we have going on here we have our 24 pixel gaps it's really hard to see the other line but there is our horizontal rule that's pushing this down 24 pixels that margin zero auto centered this we put in the gaps handling the gap then we have all of this which we've set up previously 
we have our type, we have this, they're aligned to each other, but the thing I can see standing out right here is that this color does not match, and that's because I did not add that color here. So this goes into the next step of adding color, and we could just type in the hex value here, but we do use another way of, um, where we actually import our themes. So if I go to the top of our project and go up here to our imports, I go import themes from themes, and it's a string themes. We actually have to go to the path themes, and then it's our themes as CSS, and then we have to do export. That's how Vite likes it. Typically, we wouldn't have to do the question mark export, but that's just how Vite is wanting it. So now if I take this value, go down here back to color, and I go themes dot, and then it was that gray 600. Just to verify, we'll click on it, go down here, and gray 600. So some of you are probably wondering where does this all happen at, and I can quickly show you. This all happens down here inside this themes file. If we go down into our themes.d.ts is where we assign these variables. So we know which ones are being exported. That's what TypeScript has the autocomplete. Uh, but where it actually is happening is if we go inside our themes, we have our default themes here. All this stuff here is where we do all of our themes for all of our colors. And down here is where we're doing that export. So if we go to that neutral gray 600, it's right there. So that's where that export is happening. And that's how uh, with SCSS, we are able to use it there. And this is how the autocomplete happens. So that is how we answer that question. So let's just prettier this up. It's gonna stack, which is what I expected. Um, all right, moving on, we're going to need to continue on down here, and we just got to move on to our select. So there should be one. We just got to move outside this box. And then we're going to go ahead and let's see. Yep, we have a label select here. We're going to give it a title and its status. It's going to have is required. And then it does have the same kind of uh, structure as the label select that we have here, where it has the input, and we have all the input props. And this time we have the select props. So let's open that up, and I know it's going to take, based on the comments, it's going to have hidden and visible as the two options. So we will come into here, and we will do uh, options. And that's going to be equal to an array, because it's uh, there's multiple of them, and it's going to have a label, and it's going to be hidden, and the value is going to be um, false, but in this case, what we'll do is we'll do it as a boolean as a number value, and then it's going to be another one. That's going to be a label. It's visible, and its value is going to be one. Let's just correct my spelling here. Oh crap. Wow, I'm having definitely a dyslexic moment. There we are. All right, so now we have that. We have our options uh, for this component, and we're gonna have to have a default value, which will set all that stuff up uh, during the logic portion of this series. Uh, moving on down, we will go ahead and just get the next one, which is gonna be another label input. And I'm just going to go ahead and just copy one of these here. This one will be app URL. It is required. Its placeholder is going to be app URL. Awesome. And lastly, we have the last area uh, with the buttons. And again, it's going to be pretty much exactly like this one was up here, where it is uh, a display flexed. So Honestly, what I will do just to kind of save time on code, so I'll find that here, copy that, come down here, replace the opening box with it, and we're going to add in our two buttons. Boom, import our button. The look on this one, if we click on them, we can see that this one is going to be. I wonder if it shows in here. I know it used to show 
back uh, when we were in Figma, but um, it looks like it's not showing it, but I can tell just based on this one, it's an outlined button. So outlined primary, it's our primary because it's the primary colors. If you do have questions and you don't know exactly where to find that, the best way to is to kind of go back to the dashboard here. If we open it up in a second tab and scroll up to the top, you can click on style guide and you can find where we have our buttons. If I can find that, so primary, secondary button. So if we click on that, so here's all of our secondary colors, but if we click on primary, if we select outline, it'll show all the outlined ones. So it's a primary outlined button. And there's a couple things that we need to have it do. So let me just close this, bring it back here. So for this first one, it's going to be, it's not self-closing, it's regular button, and it's going to have the words cancel for it. And let's just duplicate this one because this next one's actually going to be a standard or primary, contained primary. On this one, it's going to be an on click and it's a fat arrow. And just for now, we're just going to have it do the pop-up controller dot close. And then it's going to be the demo edit one. So that way we can close that. This one is by default disabled. And we got to change this to apply. And that should be it for now without getting into the weeds with what all needs to happen. Right now, apply shouldn't do anything. Um, we should see this, so let's just go ahead and open this up. All right, looks like I messed up some CSS here. Let's go ahead and just refresh this. Click me. All right, looks like we got something going on and it might be because I probably put some stuff inside a extra box tag that did not need to be there and that's exactly what it looks like. So working on this smaller screen is a little more difficult. Let's just look back at the top. So here's our main one. Display flex in there, right underneath the, or sorry, we have our main content wrapper. So really everything, there should only have had two things, box, box. And that's where it is. So all this stuff that I just added needs to go up one more layer here. If I save that, come back in here. Awesome. So this is a, another thing. So by default, our buttons will uh, only expand to the width that they are, like for content wise that they have inside them. Uh, so what we need to do, there's some other props that we need to add to this is we need to say full width on this button and then we need to say full width on this button. Save that, there we go. Looks a little better now. Um, let's kind of pull up our design. Let's just pop this guy out, duplicate it and pop him out and look at it left to right. Kind of look at everything here. So, Looks like this image has a gap to the bottom here and it says title, Im tile image. So this is going to need to change. We're going to have to give this a different title. Let's go back up there real quick to this drag and drop. Media type. Is there a title? Yep, there is a title. And it's just going to be image. Let's save that and see what that looks like. Boom. So that fixed it right there. We just did not add our image there to it. Looking down, looks good. Do, do, do. This is, again, commented out. We can type in here, but we'll make sure that all of this, all the functionality of this matches. If we look at our select, we have our two options. We have hidden, we have visible. Um, one thing is we don't wanna make this searchable, so let's go ahead and let me just go ahead and remove that on it. That's a simple prop that if we come down to our select, we go to our select options and then it's gonna be is searchable and we're gonna set that to false. So if we save that, I come back in here, I should not be able to type, yep, just like that. At URL, that's gonna be in there or cancel. So again, because uh, we just it's just been refreshing in here, we got to sometimes refresh the page, have it close. We're going to do the click me, click the cancel, 
closes it right up. Awesome apply, doesn't let you do anything because it's disabled. And then we click that. Uh, some things that I want to, I like to do. So you see with the button here, you got a cursor that has a pointer. Um, and up there, this icon doesn't. These are things that I look at when I when I come on here because you can see the cursor does change for all these things, but this is not really showing that you can click it. So we have a cool prop on our icon that you can just say uh, cursor pointer. Save that. Now the cursor is a pointer. Again, it won't let me click it just because of V to refreshing. So I'll have to refresh the page, test it out. There it is. Cool. So that looks pretty much exactly like the design here. Uh, for the most part, I don't see anything right off the bat of what I might be missing. So it's good, but we can always just inspect it. And if I get our little tool out here and start to hover over stuff, I've got to make sure I'm on the right one. Hover over it so we can see we have our gap between everything. Our buttons are in line with that border. If you see that that greenish um, area around the entire component, that shows that. And then we have our gap going on between the buttons here. Yeah, it's looking really good. All right, and even our 12 pixels here is pushed in and down. Yep, so I would say that this is a good UI right now, and I would start now working on the uh, the next section, which is going to be the uh, functionality of this component, adding in the form control, the validators, everything like that, getting the stuff passing back, actually pulling in the props that we talked about for the first video and utilizing it there. So, you know, thank you for watching. I appreciate it. And I'll see you in the next video.